Stanton and I'm from Buena Vista County and today I'm going to be talking to you about hypoglycemia and prediabetes. Just a little bit of background information before I start, start talking about it. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, hypoglycemia in 8th grade and then recently, um, the past three months, I was diagnosed with, pre with prediabetes and so these are things that I've been dealing with for a long time and I'm really excited to share with you um, about uh, these conditions. when um, that person's blood sugar becomes too low. Now, the normal blood sugar is between 80 to 120, and that's for um, kids through adults, and usually that's just the flat-out range. Um, sometimes it can uh, vary depending on different symptoms, but usually it's between 80 and 120. Now, hypoglycemia is anything uh, below 70, and that's considered low blood sugar, which is hypoglycemia. Um, it can vary depending on the symptoms. Sometimes your blood sugar can be a little high, higher, and you can still be experiencing those symptoms. But most of the time, your blood sugar is going to drop um, below 70, and that's when you'll start experiencing some of the symptoms. Uh, these are a lot of the symptoms that uh, I have personally experienced and uh, just some symptoms in general that you will experience if you are having hypoglycemia. Um, some of those are confusion, double blurred vision, seizures, tremor, anxiety, sweating, hunger, heart palpitations, and unconsciousness. Uh, for me personally, um, I had a lot of headaches, a lot of sweating, uh, I had a tremor, I did have some absence seizures that were going on. Uh, they didn't really think it was related to hypoglycemia at the time. Uh, I also had um, a lot of blurred vision. I really didn't know where I was a lot of the time. And so those are definitely uh, very common symptoms to be having when you have hypoglycemia. And they're uh, very, very, very common among um, a lot of people that don't know they have hypoglycemia. Uh, different foods to eat just in, in everyday life and also especially when you have hypoglycemia and prediabetes. Uh, usually for breakfast you want to have a protein. You want to try and limit your sugars because that's what's causing your blood sugar to go low. And so usually for breakfast I would eat eggs, a piece of whole wheat toast with peanut butter, and that holds me over um, until lunchtime. I don't usually need a snack in the morning, uh, so that's really a filling um, breakfast that I enjoy. For lunch, usually I'll eat a salad. It's very um, easy to take to school with me or just have at home. Uh, something that's very important on my salad is make sure I have a lot of protein. Um, try to stay away from the high fat dressings. I, I do more of a low fat dressing if I use dressing at all. And then veggies, I can eat as many veggies as I want and they're delicious. And so um, veggies are always really good to have on salad. And then I can follow that with a piece of fruit or wheat bread. And I'll talk a little bit more about why uh, those things need to be limited, but I can still have them. And then for supper, again, protein and veggies, um, they become your best friend, and you find a lot of different ways to cook them, uh, so I don't really ever get tired of that. And then just some different snacks that are um, healthy for me to eat when I'm going into hypoglycemic episodes would be like a piece of string cheese, um, half a peanut butter sandwich, or a handful of assorted nuts. Now, uh, what most people don't realize is that hypoglycemia can be very common, and they want to know what causes this. And hypoglycemia is simply um, maybe you're skipping meals or you're not getting enough um, sip or complex carbohydrates and car complex sugars. Um, some people consume too much simple and simple carbs and sugars, and so um, they start feeling those symptoms of headaches, sweating, tremors, and it's really just caused by not eating the right foods at the right time. Um, and then when that happens, you lose energy and you feel tired and those are where a lot of the symptoms are being pulled from. So when I'm having a hypoglycemic episode and I'm experiencing those symptoms, I have gotten pretty good about knowing when I'm going into them, but if you um, haven't been diagnosed by a doctor, you may not really um, know when you're actually going into hypoglycemia. But if you're experiencing those, sim those symptoms and you're um, looking back on what you eat, um, what you need to do is you need to consume a simple sugar immediately. Um, something that usually I have on hand is like um, juice or a fruit snack or a granola bar. Um, but that will get your blood sugars to spike up. Usually during basketball games or volleyball games when I experience it, um, my mom will bring me like a Mountain Dew and she'll be like, chug this. Um, that gets my blood sugar really quickly up um, and that just goes through my bloodstream. 
Um, and glucose, ca glucose tablets, I know uh, you guys have probably heard of those if you're um, hearing of diabetes. A lot of diabetics use glucose tablets, but um, they're also very helpful for hypoglycemia because it, again, just pops your blood sugar right back up. The important thing to know is that when you're taking a glucose tablet, you shouldn't just take it by itself. It needs to be followed with a complex sugar or a complex carb because that's what's going to sustain your blood sugar. If you're just consuming uh, the glucose tablets by yourself, you'll feel great for about 15 to 20 minutes and then you're going to go right back into another hypoglycemic episode. And so that's something to really be conscious of. If you're going to eat um, candy because you're not feeling well and you feel like those symptoms of hypoglycemia, make sure you're following it with a complex sugar or complex carb. That's really the key to um, stop your body from having multiple in one day. Uh, prevention is really pretty simple. Avoid eating simple sugars um, and consume them in moderation. It doesn't mean you can't have a cookie or a piece of cake or ice cream, um, but it's definitely in moderation and also certain times of day. Um, breakfast is a big one not to have a lot of sugar because your body is just waking up. So it needs to be refueled, and if you're just refueling your body with simple sugar, then your body is just going to feel tired, and you're going to start having symptoms of that. Um, for me, something that I've uh, been doing recently is eating six small meals a day. This uh, just it helps me have a more constant blood sugar level and not have me so um, up and down. And so I've been eating, I have like an egg for breakfast, and then mid-morning snack, and then lunch, then a, an afternoon snack, and then supper. And that's really, um, I've noticed a big change in how um, my hypoglycemia is very uh, little because um, I am being more constant in my diet and the simple sugars are spread out more. Now recently I was diagnosed with insulin resistance and prediabetes. Now they're two different things. Um, insulin resistance is a little um, less uh, severe long term. Um, insulin resistance is when the body does produ produce enough insulin, so it's not diabetic. Um, a lot of type 1 would be like less insulin. Um, but it does not use the insulin correctly, and insulin is um, produces glucose, which is your energy for your body. And then prediabetes is when the body produces blood sugar levels that are higher than normal. So I was going from being low, being hypoglycemic, which is 70 and under, to having blood sugars that were um, um, higher than normal. And so that was kind of the, the weird thing was I was going from low and now I'm going to high. Um, so it's not considered type 2 diabetic, which would be high blood sugar, um, but it's in that range where it could become um, type 2 if I'm not careful in what I eat. Symptoms of this are frequent mood changes, drowsiness, um, extra fat in the abdominal area, inability to lose weight and dark patches under the skin, and these were things, um, almost all of those I was experiencing, and um, I've always struggled with my weight and um, losing weight, and so my doctor really took those things into consideration, and it's been a problem since eighth grade, and so now over the past few months we've just been finding out uh, that I have prediabetes. Um, the funny thing is, when I was researching this topic, um, almost all of the doctors that I talked to or researched about said that a lot of people have prediabetes, but they don't realize it. And so uh, you may be walking around like having all of these symptoms, but you may not even know that you're pre-diabetic. And so um, if you're having any of these symptoms or hypoglycemic episodes, um, I would encourage you to go see your doctor just as a precaution. It may not be um, anything severe, but if you are experiencing these, um, you may have pre-diabetes and not even know it. The causes of pre-diabetes is the body is unable to produce normal blood sugars, like I said, the blood sugar becomes higher than normal, um, but is not enough to become diabetic. The foods play a major role in what pre-diabetes pre is. It's a lot of counting your carbs, counting your sugars, um, portion control. A lot of that stuff is a big aspect of controlling pre-diabetes and making sure that it doesn't go um, full blown. And then um, when the body is unable to use the insulin correctly, the sugar stays in the blood instead of moving on to the cells. Um, so what that means is um, my body is not using the sugar correctly, uh, and so instead of going hypoglycemic, my blood sugar would just stay and it would never have um, a constant. It would always be above normal. Uh, prevention, like I said, is a lot like hypoglycemia. Um, eating six small meals a day was a big thing. And by doing that, I went
went to a dietitian a few months ago, and the dietitian gave me a plan of just showing me like how many carbs are in what. That was a struggle I was having before. I wasn't really knowing um, how many carbs in this, um, what simple sugars, and so seeing a dietitian really um, just helps you uh, get a perspective of what you can eat, when you can eat it, and how much portion size you should have at each meal. Um, keep a record of glucose levels. I have a glucose monitor. A lot of you have probably seen them if you've seen a diabetic. They have a machine where it takes your blood and then it tells you your blood sugar. Um, that's something I do very regularly um, to test my blood sugar levels and that's also very helpful if you are experiencing these symptoms to take them to your doctor because it's just more evidence um, of you experiencing these things. And um, if you start noticing blood sugar changes, that's definitely something you should show your doctor about. And then regular exercise, um, running, swimming, biking, uh, just exercising um, five, five days a week out of the seven um, really does help your blood sugar um, stay constant. I know for me during basketball and volleyball season, uh, my blood sugars are a little bit wacko because I am exercising so much, but when I combine that with good nutrition um, and exercise regularly, it, it's definitely so much better and I don't have as many of the symptoms. And that's when your metabolism will start picking up a little bit. Um, and so that's something that's super helpful. Those are just a few of the resources. Um, a lot of my resources just came from my personal experiences and talking to my doctors. I've seen an endocrinologist and um, a couple of different regular doctors, and so a lot of them uh, just really um, informed me on what it was, and I feel very knowledgeable about it. Um, just in conclusion, uh, I just want you guys to know that being hypoglycemic or pre-diabetic is not going to have a huge effect on what you can and can't do. It's simply something that if you deal with it correctly, you're going to be healthy and you're going to be happy. Um, it's just realizing that those, what those symptoms are and seeing a doctor and really taking control of your health. Um, so just watch your symptoms. Um, if you think it's necessary, watch your blood sugar levels. Um, see your doctor. And stay accountable to someone is a huge part. I know my parents, um, especially my mom, has been a big influence um, in helping me uh, stay accountable. When you have someone to stay accountable with, um, you are more likely to stay on track instead of um, staying off of it. And so uh, a meal plan is a really good way to stay accountable, or just a friend, a coworker, or your parents. Um, that's a really great way to stay accountable. Does anybody have any questions for me? I would say disease, but this, uh, in your family? That's a really good question. Um, my mom actually had hypoglycemia when she was in high school, and she still does experience those symptoms sometimes, especially when her diet changes a lot. Uh, she notices it very little, but when she does notice it, she's like having an episode right now. She starts getting those symptoms. And so, yeah, it has um, been in my family. I also have um, type 2 in my family. Uh, my cousin was diagnosed at, eight, at 19, and so that's the thing with my doctors is that I'm really trying to be cautious. I'm almost um, 18, and so this is really the time where I need to be um, really concerned about what I'm eating. Um, so yeah, it is in my family, um, which was kind of interesting because the doctors never really thought of that until a few months ago. So. Any more questions? just do like a regular um, checkup and then tell them your symptoms. Uh, for us, it took a long time to actually come to hypoglycemia. I got tested for epilepsy. I got tested for brain tumors. Um, so going in and telling and knowing your symptoms and um, writing down what you've been eating is definitely really helpful to like uh, minimizing the symptoms and um, getting down to a diagnosis. Um, but yeah, they will do um, some blood tests. I was on a fasting. Um, a lot of women that are pregnant, you have to go in for that test where you drink that really nasty syrup stuff and then you have to get your blood drawn. Um, I did that twice and I've done a fasting test recently where I could not eat and pass like 6 o'clock the, the, the night before and go and I didn't eat till like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and they're constantly checking my blood sugar. And then when I started experiencing symptoms, uh, they take my blood and see if it's low or high and so that was a really good way for them to tell. Um, they can do numerous tests um, with your pancreas and things like that. So there's a lot of different um, blood tests that they can do. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, that was something that when I saw my dietitian, my mom and I were shocked about because we were like, she's like, well, there's there's carbs and fruit and there's sugar and fruit, so it's really you need to be careful on what fruits you're eating and. So yeah, I have to limit my portion size of my 
fruit, which I was kind of like, oh, I love fruit. But um, yeah, cantaloupe and apples and bananas and grapes, uh, just a lot of those I have to. Uh, I can eat them, but in smaller quantities. Um, as I thought before, I can just be like, fruit, I can eat that. Um, so yeah, that's something that fruit has carbohydrates in it. Any other questions? Yeah. A complex sugar. That would be like a peanut butter sandwich. The peanut butter um, has the protein but also has sugar in it. And then the whole wheat it still has a carb and a sugar but together. Um, that's something that will hold me over a little longer. And so that'd be an example of a complex carb. Um, com a simple carb would be like a piece of wheat bread and a simple sugar would be like a candy bar or juice.